Okay, team. We're gonna dive in. Two. The Bleed Zerker Skull Splitter, or in this game, Skull Breaker variant. Okay? The Bleed Zerker Stun Skull Breaker variant. It's kind of a long name. Maybe we'll uh, shorten that to like Stun Bleed Zerker or something. But there's a lot going on with this guy. So this is a variant of the Bleed Zerker build that we had talked about before. And I don't mean to like kind of poo-poo my own build right off the bat, but my suspicion is at this point, just going for the pure giga damage bleed zerker may still just be better. And the reason why it might be better right now, but maybe better later on, or this could be better later on, is that the stat investment that you have to have for this uh, setup is a little bit more important to have like lucky hit and stuff, right? The Bleeding Skull Zerker. <laughs> the Bleed Brawler, yeah. Something like that. Anyway, before we ramble on too much, um, the theory behind the build is making use of a high amount of lucky hit to proc certain interesting effects. So, we'll go through the gear in a moment, but you'll notice that I have 29.4 base lucky hit, further compounded by using polearm expertise for a 10% increased lucky hit chance, right? So that gives my main attack a 43% lucky hit chance which is probably more like 50 because this lucky hit does not show up on my character menu so it's either not working and I need to quit using it or it's uh, more than it even shows right there so we have a lot of lucky hit on the front end of our attacks now because we have 30% plus you know another 10% so that's buffing our base and how lucky hit works is it it basically buffs by a percentage your lucky hit chance of your gear so like if my lucky hit is normally like 33% and I have 30% lucky hit on my gear it'll give me an extra 10% chance to lucky hit which is why it says 43% right and then of course we have another 10% on top of that so it's probably more like yeah like 46% chance lucky hit something like that 47% chance lucky hit and that's pretty good because we make use of some lucky hit stuff in the build to go through the gear just in general, a lot of the same stuff that we talked about for Bleed Zerker is there. But we've got CDR is continues to be the priority on my helmet. I'm now really looking forward to adding life to my uh, setup. All stats is nice, total armor is fantastic, and I've got um, deter not, not determination, I've got um, disobedience on there. I think about PoE there. Um, eventually, I'd like to probably move disobedience to my neck so I can get the 75% armor on there, which would be really cool. I think that since last video, we've changed my chest piece. We were using the Harrogath, but now we have this double f plus four ranks of shouts chest, which is awesome. It has a plus damage stat on there, and I really would like it to be more like a defense stat at some point. But we have four ranks of challenging shout, nearly 15% extra damage, four ranks of rallying cry, and 22.3% reduction from close enemies. And we have that with the overcapping rage gives you fortify aspect. Now here's where we start to get into some interesting things, right? So we have attack speed, max rolled on gloves, four ranks of rend, and a decent lucky hit chance that we could actually be improved, right? We could get a whole 4% more lucky hit on there, 4.2%, uh, which we want to get eventually with strength. And we have imprinted with, whenever you deal direct damage with berserking, you inflict 30% of the base damage dealt as an additional bleeding damage over five seconds. So it's like, wait a minute. I thought berserk ripping wasn't very good for bleed. It was re-enabled, they disabled it, they re-enabled it, but yeah, it's like your your actual hit of rend hardly deals anything, so you're not really getting a lot of value out of berserking, berserk ripping, because you don't ever deal big chunks of damage. It's like, yeah, that's usually the case, but, but let's let's keep going. So we, we removed the temerity pants and put on some actual defense pants with damage reduction from distant, all stats, damage reduction from bleeding, and additional damage reduction when I'm fortified. And we have a another instance, or maybe our, even our first instance of Lucky Hit that we've seen on our gear so far, which is Lucky Hits grant us, um, or Lucky Hits give us a 35% chance to gain a bunch of Fortify whenever you do damage with Berserking, right? So, we're Berserking a fair amount, but one of the things that we're going to look to do with this build moving forward is Berserking even more. And we'll get into that. As you'll notice, I still have uh, Blue Gems in here for the extra uh, damage reduction while Fortified. 
again, I might I might experiment back with health because my health is dropping a little bit low because we're starting to itemize for lucky hit instead of HP on my rings, and that's gonna make us squishy for sure. But here we go. Here's another lucky hit thing. Um, these these boots are nice, just good stats, movement speed, fury cost reduction, um, and a, a really nice thing is attacks reduce evades cooldown. So basically, with this build, you can attack three times and then then kind of dodge. So it's like one two three dodge, one two three dodge. I and mean, when you get in rhythm with that, it's really fun. But here we have direct damage against the bleeding enemies, which is every enemy that we ever attack. Has up to a 29% chance to stun them for two seconds. And it's like, okay. So you're stunning enemies. I guess that is part of the stun lead zerker, isn't it? It's like, okay, cool. Gotcha. Here's our mace that we've been using for a long time. Crit, Vuln, damage two. And then all stats. The all stats, eventually, maybe we could roll that to strength. That would be cool. Um, where each point of fury we generate while at maximum fury grants our next core skill four times increased damage of the 60% we put that that's 60% is a pretty big number so we put that on there which we overcap rage frequently if I was still using temerity we'd still use the absorb but we're not another thing that I noticed uh, in the YouTube comments was somebody was saying that critical damage against vulnerable targets does not get calculated as just base character critical strike damage so it wasn't working on your bleeds and so I was like okay well I guess we'll just go back to damage over time we could also try damage two cc targets which i think are yellow gems but um anyway we're back to purple gems there and now we have edge masters which is also working again skills deal up to 18 percent increased damage based on your primary resource when cast and you already always have a lot of primary resource so we're uh, we're hitting pretty hard with that not perfectly rolled but that's okay again on the weapon we have crit vuln damage two and strength that'll work that'll work crit gems don't work with bleeds that that's some some, some testing that, that uh, somebody did on YouTube, they were telling me in the comments that crit damage against vulnerable targets is not the same thing as crit damage in terms of the calculation of your last talent that makes crit chance and crit damage apply on your bleeds, right? So, unless that's wrong information, that's what I'm hearing. This weapon, this is where things get interesting, okay? You paying attention? This is where things get interesting. This, this particular ability isn't one I necessarily need to put on a two-hander, because I like my other stuff, but it is very cool. It is very cool. We have Vuln, all stats, crit, and damage to close. But here we have Stunning, a bleeding enemy, deals 36% of their total bleeding amount to them as physical damage. So we put on bleeds that are in the millions of damage, and then we stun them somehow to chunk them for almost 40% of that bleed amount, right? That bleed amount then gets reapplied to them via Berserk Ripping. So, it's not the ins most insane damage scaling. And it's a lot of talents to maybe just deal less damage. But it's a very interesting variant, and it's one that I've been playing around with. And I feel like as you go up in Nightmare tier, it's nice to have some CC. It's nice to have some stuns. And then benefiting from those stuns off your bleeds in interesting ways sounds cool to me. And what's cool about this the skull breaker thing, this guy right here, it doesn't pull the bleed off, right? It doesn't like consume the bleed. It just deals the damage of the bleed. So your bleed is still hitting for all the damage that it would have. It just adds this damage to that, and then adds a third of this damage to that. So if your bleed was hitting for a million, right? You stomp them, it deals 360,000, and then adds an extra 120,000 to them as bleed damage, right? So, kinda cool, kinda cool. It, it blasts elites. And sometimes, it what feels weird about this build is that, okay, if an enemy's health is just completely consumed by bleed, then why would I even bother stomping them or stunning them to make the bleed tick faster? when they already would have died two seconds later. And it's... That's something that I struggle with with this build too, and with, with Rend in general. However, sometimes mobs will die from like half health because they have a big chunk of bleed on them for their first bit of their health. You stomp it, it does another third of that damage, and then the third of that damage comes down too while the rest of the bleed is still ticking, and it kills them from like half health. So... It's kind of interesting. It's kind of interesting. And that's why I wanted to make a build guide showing it off to you, because it's very interesting to me. It's got a lot of cool interactions, and again, it's like Diablo is a game where you probably do want to mid-max and just make the best build, but sometimes the cool builds are also 
something to look out for. And again, I don't mean to poo-poo the build. It's just like, there's a lot going on, and I'm not even sure if it's better. <laughs> but it is really cool. Um, anyway, we have this weapon with our 50% um, attack speed af after a crit, which is just probably my favorite aspect in the whole game, just in terms of the way it makes characters feel. It's really nice. Uh, on our necklace, we have three ranks of No Mercy, which is plus 9% crit chance to bleeding enemies. That's insane. We have 12.3 cooldown reduction, which is also fantastic. We have 10 point whatever willpower because that's something I will eventually roll off, but it is very useful right now to help me get to um, good Paragon stuff. Then it has total armor on it too. So we, we have two sources of total armor, which is great. Um, very, very nice. And then in the rings, the rings are one of the places where you can get lucky hit. So we have lucky hit, we have crit, we have resource reduction, and honestly, or resource generation, I would honestly love for that last stat to be health. I think life on my ring would actually be fine by me. Uh, we could do Vuln damage, crit damage, whatever. Damage to close is like not that good, but it is what it is. But the big stats I'm looking for are really lucky hit chance, resource generation, and then I could I could drop a little bit of crit, but I like crit a lot. So we've kept crit on there. I think my, my ideal last stat right now would be life just to get my HP up. Because we sacrificed a lot of offense, or sorry, sorry, we sacrificed a lot of defense to go offense to try to get this lucky hit thing, so. But it's interesting. And stunning enemies is defense. It's, it's damage you're not taking, so. A lucky hit means stuns, and a lucky hit means fortify, so. It's that, it is what it is. We have crit, lucky hit, resource generation, again, the big three, and then once again, we have a stat that we don't love, but it's damage to CC'd enemies. Everything is always CC'd. It is what it is, and our aspects on those are the, I, I have basic skills grant me 20% damage reduction for a whole 9 seconds. Eventually, when I get a full roll disobedience, I'm going to swap these two. I'm going to get 75% armor on my necklace, and I'm going to get just 6 seconds of damage reduction for basic attack. I, I just like that one. I, I think it's good. 20% damage reduction for pressing one button for 6 seconds is cool. So that's what we're doing. Um, 9 seconds is nice, too. On the ring, I'm using Shout Skills Generate Fury. In my entire time playing this game, I think I found one single Shout Skills Generate Fury. Uh, fury and it was three and so i had to book the two fury which doesn't really feel great but that's what we're doing and then of course we have the bold chieftains reducing the um, cooldown of our shouts on our other aspects so that's what we're rocking with in terms of gear in terms of expertise again we're actually using polearm technique if you if you didn't want to use the polearm weapon technique then just use axe use a sword as your weapon use use uh axe to get the vulnerability damage that's fine too but I, i'm really leaning into the the a lucky hit it's pretty fun, and um, let me show you the abilities. Let me show you how this works. So, you have Ground Stomp, you have your three shouts, and I'm actually playing Lunging Strike with the Berserk element of it, because my Berserk uptime has, su has suffered a lot by using the Stun variant. Um, and just before I dive in too much, basically there's three versions of the build to play. They're, like, your talents can stay almost the same when you have the Stun aspect. You can play Wrath of the Berserker for farming really fast. You can play stun for CC and more on-demand stuff, and you can play Iron Skin for defense, right? I don't know if I trust this guy right there. <laughs> Cooking up something. Um, Iron Skin, I haven't really played it with it too much, but if you just need to be a tank, Iron Skin is good. And it's like, the, removing three talent points, adding three talent points, it's really easy to switch between those three things. That's what I end up recommending. Um, but anyway, we have Lunging Strike with Berserking, because we need Berserk. Basically, critical strikes with Lunging Strike grant you Berserk for 1.5 seconds. We crit very often. Um, so, getting this Berserking is really, really nice. Um, and I, I love Flay. And I actually love Bash with this build, too. But I think what this does for us is give us the opportunity to have Berserking up. Because the play style... We'll actually probably do some gameplay here in a minute. Um, we're using our two-handed hammer as the weapon of choice. Because that one, we, I'll show you in a second, we spec to stun. So we have lucky hit stunning on anything. Then we have lucky hit stunning with the hammer in particular. And if you are berserking when you do it, then you get berserk ripping and the skull breakers at the same time, right? So you can basically run a couple times, then you start bang, 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 just bapping people with your, with your mace to stun them. And you can get a more reliable stun by playing bash, but you don't get the reliable berserking. So that's why I'm leaning towards berserk with lunging strike on this one. I'm putting a bunch of points in Rend, because we do love Rend, and we want that maxed out, and we're going for the Rend grants you Fury per hit, because we need a lot of Fury. Um, I did put one point in Pressure Point, because with, without Flay, we don't really have any kind of way to bring back 
uh, vulnerability on a target, and 10% vulnerability feels pretty bad. But we start to get a little thin on points. So, if we're going to take points from anywhere, it's it's kind of tricky at this point. But I, I need, like, one teeny tiny small chance to put uh, Vulnerable back on the target. And I may even go through my Paragons to get Decimator again, even though I don't like that very much. Just so it's an 18% chance. But anyway, for this version, we go for Ground Stomp. We get the uh, Ground Stomp generates 25 Fury. That ends up feeling pretty good. Just a little bit more Fury gain. We have one point here, but then four points from my chest. We're going into uh, generating additional Fury. We're going into Challenging Shout. As usual, Challenging Shout, of course, giving us Fury each time we take damage and buffing our HP, which is nice. If we were going to go for Iron Skin, which you could do, then we would probably end up going into the Heal, which would scale well with your Shouts. We have a lot of Fortify, but we could do Fortify if you struggled with Fortify. But that's another option, right? So it's either Stomp for CC, this for just pure tankiness, or you could go down to Wrath of Berserker for just, like, Giga Blast damage, right? We're going with, with Warcry. What I might actually do, though, is I might take a point out of this 10% damage on Warcry, and I might put this point, because I, 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 don't, I don't, like, super love this one. If I'm really struggling with vulnerability, I can move this talent point up to pressure point. That'd be nice, actually. I might, I might do that right now. I, I, I don't mind losing 10% damage on in a very specific situation compared to losing like 400% damage if my, if my uh, thing falls off. Um, vulnerability falls off. But now we have shouts. Increase the duration of shouts. Increase uh, the amount of healing that we get from shouts, which is nice. Uh, I tried a build without using Warcry and using Wrath of Berserker instead. I don't have the rage generation for that, but that's like a that's like another option. But I don't think it feels very good. I think the three shouts is a really important anchor for this build. We go for Pit Fighter for 9% increased damage to close, 6% damage reduction from distant enemies. Then we have No Mercy, which we did have a whole lot of points at No Mercy, but now we only have three out of three because it's just for my necklace. If you didn't want to, if you didn't care about the stunning as much and you just wanted to take your points out of this next talent down here, then you just put it back in No Mercy. Uh, we definitely have Hamstring, one point just to apply slow so that everything is slowed. Uh, yes, th this is this is we're recording the guide live here for on YouTube. So thank you for tuning in on Twitch. Sorry for not talking to chat too much, but yes, this will be on YouTube for you guys exactly. Make sure you subscribe to YouTube for more content like this, and make sure you follow Twitch for more content like this. Um, but yeah, we're doing big damage to vulnerable enemies, which is always what we want. We are generating fortify from taking damage, and we are doing more damage when we have over 50% of our max life is fortify, which is all the time pretty much. Um, now, here's where things get really freaky. And here's where things are like, are you really spending points on this? And it's like, in this variant, yes. But I'll, I'll make you aware of your options. You don't have to do this. You can spend your points elsewhere. If you want to just go into vulnerability and max out your crit, that's where the, I think this point would go. You could max out your chance to re-vuln, and you could max out your chance to crit again, which is fine. But here's what we do. We take increased critical strike damage with two hit weapons, just in general. But we also do this. So we take one point in Wallop. Just whatever. Bludgeoning weapons, we don't really use that much except for um, Lunging Strike, which isn't really even a damage skill. But it becomes a damage skill when we stun something with it, right? So we're using our two-handed hammer, which gives us a 45% chance to stun enemies for three seconds. Right? So think about this. We have, like, 47% lucky hit chance. And then we have... 45% on top of that, right? So that's like a 20% chance to lucky hit and stun something for three seconds. And if I crit that lunging attack that stuns them, it will do all of our berserk ripping and the skull breaking at the same time. So it does a big chunk of damage and then reapplies that chunk of damage back to them as a bleed, right? Not not ever taking anything away. So if, if, if the wheels are turning in your mind, you, have a, you do all your rending, right? And then you start wailing on them with Lunging Strike, going Berserk, and bopping them for chunks of their HP, making them take more and more bleeding damage as they get stunned. And so it's definitely more of like an elite killer, but this build has always been an elite killer. But now we also have AoE that, that compounds that. So, kind of interesting. You could move these points away if you don't care about stunning as often, you would rather crit more frequently, then you just take these points out and move back to crit, right? We're also doing Tempered Fury, to give us 9% uh, of our max life for each Fury spent, which is a lot. You don't spend as much Fury uh, as the Stun or the uh, Iron Skin build as you do as the Wrath of Berserker build. 
Wrath of the Berserker spend, generates and spends lots and lots of fury. That's really nice, but sometimes in the higher keys you want to get a stun, like a reliable stun to AoE and then just chop up the elites while they're locked down a little bit. Um, but what we have here is uh, this is another option. And then of course we go all the way back down to Gushing Wounds, right? Which gives our crit chance and crit damage uh, uh, the ability to apply to our bleeds. Not individual bleed ticks, but when you slash, that slash it can make the whole bleed stack crit and it will crit increase your damage by the amount of critical damage strike bonus that you have, right? So that, those are the talents. That's how that works. Um, again, if you want to move talent points from here into some other utility, like vulnerable, like life, like movement speed, you can. But if you want to change your abilities, you're always pulling the same three talent points. One, two, three. One, two, three. Or one, two, three, right? Those are your three options there. For Paragon, my Paragon tree is probably not optimized, and I will probably make changes over time, but here's I'll show you what we're working with. At least the glyphs that we have on, I guess we can just walk through it uh, as we go, right? So I'm going up this side, I'm grabbing uh, damage. I may come back down for this later. It's pretty close by, actually. A little bit more life would be fine. We are kind of getting into the tier where the um, mobs are hitting us really hard, so I'll have to consider that. We're getting... I'm putting Marshall here just because it's easy to get the, the strength because of all these strength nodes. Grabbing uh, armor and strength. Physical damage and strength. Going up here. We're grabbing physical damage over time. We're grabbing hemorrhage. I I'm not like super in love with hemorrhage. And we could like rotate this whole plot so that we can get through this little thing faster. Because we could we could avoid all of this. But I do I do like this. I like the physical damage over time. Hemorrhage is kind of nice. Coming through physical damage over time again to get a exploit glyph. Exploit being vulnerable damage. And um Applying vulnerability to them like instantly. We need a training dummy in this game. And Marshall is uh, a glyph that just buffs things around it on your tree, but also gives your shouts basically a two seconds of reduced cooldown um, overall, right? Because you cast your first shout, you cast this shout, this shout comes down by 1.2 seconds. You cast this shout, this shout comes down by 1.2 seconds. So does this one. And then eventually, this one comes off cooldown, reduces this one by 1.2 seconds. So, like, it, it just kind of cascades your cooldown reduction, it, leading to about, you know, 2.4 second cooldown reduction for all your shouts. If you use them on cooldown like that. So, we have exploit here. We went up here. Now, I wouldn't necessarily do these in order because I think that. Okay, no, this is actually fine. Exploit and disembowel might want to be your first two glyphs, though, just so you know. I put in disembowel a little bit later, but it's pretty good. Um, maybe I could, uh, can I, ex I can expand this, can't I? Yeah. It might be kind of nice, you guys can see a little better. Um, but yeah, we came up through there. For exploit, I came over here later, but we'll do that, we'll do that later. Um, damage over time. I am, on my Paragon tree, trying to pick up more Dexterity and Willpower when I can, because those are stats that are, are harder to get on my gear, and more important for later Paragon, like, uh, like special unlocks. So we have, right now I have damage with two-handed slashing weapons with vulnerable damage. It's just such an easy point to get that we're already pathing to. Better than this one, I feel like. We are not getting Decimator, but I might have to. Because I need a little bit more Vuln reapplication with my way I spent my skill points. Basically, this game has so many little things to accomplish. Like, you want Fortify, you want Vulnerability, you want Berserk. You want all these little things. You want, like, chances to lucky hit. And so you have to, like, kind of shift all your little available resources around. It's really interesting. Like, like action RPG games are often a puzzle like that. And this one does it well. We have Vulnerable Damage. We're using Disembowel here. Disembowel is insane. Damage over time and bleeding uh, enemies when they die have a chance to reduce the cooldowns of your non-ultimate active cooldowns by one second. Um, so this build really does well with it. So does Iron Skin, right? Because those are non there's a non-ultimate abilities. So your shout. So you can break all those things down, which is nice. Um, we have damage reduction from vulnerable enemies, which is nice. Uh, I don't think so, Scrib. I've theory crafted this one out myself, so I, I I don't know if anybody else is doing this, but maybe. Maybe they are. This one will be up on Mobilitics, though. But I don't think so. Um, I think what I should do here... Well, no. This would be fine. Yeah, we'll do willpower, because we need willpower. We come over here. Actually kind of snake down and grab this more, with, for more vulnerable damage. Once again, we could probably shave this off if we didn't want to, but it, it's, it is some nice stuff, right? It's a total of 35% vulnerable damage, so... Until we really need to make a push for a glyph or something like that, I'll probably just leave it there. Then we come down here, we grab Blood Feeder for 5% critical strike chance against bleeding enemies, which is everything. And it scales your uh, your bleeding damage, or your damage to bleeding enemies. Uh, we're grabbing bleeding enemy damage right there too. A little bit extra bleeding enemy damage right there. 
It does get nicely buffed, it looks like, too. Yeah, how is that? Yeah. Interesting. It's buffing us up, I guess. With the, because of the 7 dexterity, I suppose. That's just how it reads. Um, I would love to come get this talent. My, my Berserk up time is not good enough right now. And we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 11 points to get that. It would be nice to get that. Um, we don't have it right now, but it would be very nice to get that. They will actually come through this way, though. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So it's three more points to get this. But it, we, we do need damage reduction because we're getting hit hard these days. Um, anyway, we come down here for more damage to bleeding enemies. Come down here. Really just kind of shooting right for the glyph slot on this map, which is probably what I should have done over here, too. But we can deal with that later. Uh, this is Wrath. So this is my most recent glyph edition. It's critical strike damage with core skill scaling, and the skills that critically strike generate three fury. So... We have a lot of crit. It's very nice. Very nice to get a lot of crit. Then we grab physical damage with the thing, with a few things around it just so we can support the dexterity requirement. I, all, I The reason why, why I came at this for two from two angles is because it's one, it's I think it's actually less points to do it this way. And two, I really needed Warbringer. I can map it out and I'll see if like Snake in this way is actually faster. Let's see. What's the fastest way we could go? Let's see like right here. Right here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Or, we could do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Maybe it is faster if I don't mind giving up damage while fortified, but I kind of do. Um, well, we could get we could kind of get both if we if like snaked on this way. Okay, I might have to trim this build up a little bit because I, I we really need warbringer but now the thing is i i kind of do stuff in a way that like i get stuff that i need like when i have the points and then we can when i get more points we can actually go back so i might i might respec this to snake down this way to grab the maximum fury and then grab just peek down here for damage while fortified and come over here so we might do that after this video unless because i i don't want to like mess something up and have to fist like fuss with it um mid video but anyway Lots of optimization to do with the build still. Like, I am not, like, this is my core, finished, final, definitive build. I often use these build guides as, like, a like a character update, while also providing some guidance for you guys, where I try to get to a point where I'm like, this is pretty fleshed out, but also give you guys an idea of, like, how it can improve. Um, ma mainly needs to improve by adding defense right now. I think the damage is sufficient, so, yeah. But okay. I think this is this. That's my uh, my tree right now. I still I'm, I'm almost level 91, so I still have quite a few Paragon points to to get. And I think the last thing I'd probably do is maybe try to clean up the build a little bit along the way. Probably try to grab Blood Rage and probably try to grab one more um, one more tree, and maybe get. Uh, let's see, where's Hunter? I think Hunter Killer's in here somewhere, right? Yeah. Try to get like uh, movement speed and damage to elites, maybe. Weapons master, soft, soft weapons grants you fury. Or we could go for this thing. I think sometimes the legendary node is cool to look at, but what's actually better to look at is what it gives you. So we we'll probably want to try to go for like hunter killer, something like that, or elite killer. And then I'll probably throw a territorial glyph on there, so that we can have uh, reduced damage uh, against, like, reduced damage taken against close enemies, or. There's also a Fortify one in there, too, which looked really interesting to me. Because um, I think that it does give you more uh, Fortify. And there's also that one. Yeah, this one right here. You get it to 10% damage reduction the more Fortify you have. That sounds good. And dealing more damage while Fortified sounds good. But so does um, the Weapon Swap. Gives you uh, like a chance to like crit, which is kind of wild. But anyway, those are, those are the options that I'm thinking about moving towards. Close damage reduction or fortify uh, damage reduction would be great. Um, I think that covers it for us, right? Gear, stats, aspects, expertise, skills, paragon. That's where I'm at right now with this build. It's pretty fun. It's interesting. You're, you're running around and you're chopping people up like a bleed zerker does. But then you also have the, act, the added element of, like, dropping the hammer on people um, when you stun bleed them, right? Pretty cool. But alright, that'll wrap up the, the actual build guide portion. We're going to spend the rest of the day knocking out some gameplay. I might 
fiddle around with my Paragon because I think that we could actually snake this way and be more efficient. Um, but yeah, we got we got lots more Paragon points to, to gain, lots more gear improvements to make, and now that we've made the Stun Bleed Zerker variant build guide fairly complete, it's time to get to work. Let's do it. Of course, if you guys are watching on YouTube, make sure you give the video a big thumbs up, leave a nice comment. You've made it through a long video, but all my guides are. <laughs> I got a lot to talk about. Uh, but if you want to see more stuff like this, make sure that you show the video some love, show it pops up for you in the algorithm. Make sure you subscribe and enable notifications to see when they pop up uh, for you. And of course, again, if you want to see the gameplay, we're always playing live on Twitch. Uh, following the stream on there is fantastic. You can also swing by, come get drops. You can also grab yourself a sweet mount that looks like this. This bad boy right here. If you swing by the stream and give two subs until uh, July 2nd is the last day for me. Probably July 1st because we're going to be gone July 2nd. You get this mount too. So anyway, enough shout outs. Uh, let's get to work. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys.